There is a legend here in eastern Kentucky along Troublesome Creek about the blue fugates. And the legend, when it's told in very short form, is simply that Martin Fugate Sr., born around the 1780s, migrated here to an area along Lost Creek with his whole family to claim a land grant around the 1820s. He brought his wife, Sarah. Now, Martin had a slight genetic condition which increased production of methoglobin in his blood. And this is sort of similar to hemoglobin, but it gives you a more bluish color. And his wife, Sarah, who was white as a lily, had the recessive gene. And of their seven children, four of them came out incredibly blue to the point where folks said they looked like blueberries. And this was a dark blue. And because of this, they were often ostracized from the nearest community of Hazard and the Combs family, led by General Elijah Combs. And there's some dispute over whether the man was even a general, but he certainly dressed like one. So they were exiled to the hills and with a limited supply of people to have children with, the story goes that there was some inbreeding. Now, this is partly true. A lot of people married kissing cousins in the Appalachians, but to portray somebody as a family of blue people, there were blue people here. And the idea, however, that is often propagated, even in mainstream media sources, which is rejected by the Bugate family, is that it was very close interbreeding. What I would like to point out, however, is that it seems like there are some inconsistencies with this story. Take, for example, here the grave of Benjamin Bugate, the father of Martin and Martin's uh, wife's father-in-law. What's so interesting is that Martin's siblings are buried along Lost Creek, just a little ways west of here, and they were supposedly killed by Indians in 1795. They were twins. So what were they doing here in the 1790s if Martin Fugate Sr. came here years later? Now, the legend of the Blue Fugates originating with Martin Fugate, who was a French orphan who migrated here with his wife around 1820, seems to be more legend than anything else. Now, in searching the genealogical records, I found the grave of his siblings, twins Benjamin and Hannah, who were actually buried just a little bit to the east of where he supposedly first settled in 1820. They were killed by Indians at the mouth of the creek in 1795. Now, why is it that, of course, Martin is buried next to his father, who died only a year before him? If Martin was the first Fugate here, why were his siblings here and killed by Indians many years before? And I suppose the natural question to ask is, were there people living in this part of far eastern Kentucky years before the Martin Fugate family arrived? And it seems to be that there were and take a look around this part of the cemetery, most of these graves are unmarked, and you can see the headstone styles here look a little bit different than other Appalachian headstone styles. And there are a couple of people buried over on the opposite end of the cemetery, not of the Fugate family, but presumably of a family that married into them, that are also of the old Appalachian style, and also folks who died in the 1700s. If you pan over here, you can see this is an old box-style grave. And in front of it, you can see a date dating all the way back to the 1790s again, decades before Martin supposedly was here. And this is the grave of a Haddon family member who died in 1798, it would seem. And the only thing I can think of is that the Fugate family, and perhaps as well the Combs family, which were actually very influential down in town and around Hazard, had a pretty established presence here for a very long period of time. And of course, that massacre that killed Martin Fugate's family members, his young brother and sister, happened along Lost Creek, which is in fact just down the hill here. And what I think is so interesting is that you had a lively community of folks in the hills, but because the nearest populated community of Hazard, Kentucky was a good distance away, people looked at the blue folks up in the hills as basically hills have eyes, when in reality, it was a lively family and they simply had a recessive gene. Now, what I would remember here is I would suggest you read the book Colorblind Island by Dr. Oliver Sacks, a incredibly well-respected uh, psychologist who was sort of a jack of all trades. And he took a tour to this island near the um, Central Pacific where the Americans were testing a lot of missiles back in the day. And he found essentially that because of the limited genetic pool, 
most folks on that island, or at least a good number of them, had total color blindness, which is incredibly rare. And he just pointed out that society had a way of going on, albeit differently. And his trip to Colorblind Island, it was a true story. And it sort of opened people's eyes up to the fact that they weren't backwoods people. They were good people that still had their own little slice of life cut out. Now, after seeing the grave of Martin Fugate up there and his father, who died a year before Martin did, I would like to show you some more sites around the area. And I'm actually in the area to talk a little bit about family feuding that took place between the Combs family, uh, the Eversole family, and the French family. And it seems like I read the name wrong on that grave to the back left here. It's the Haddix family, born 1780 in Virginia. And this is just one member, Henley Haddix. And it seems like they migrated from Virginia. And you can see as well that you've also got the grave of, I'm not sure because I can't make out what's written on it, but a Union Army member, or it could have been a member of the earlier colonial, or, or sorry, uh, the early militia that was guarding against Indians. But... It's very difficult to make out what's written on that gravestone, and it's interesting if that is a Union Army grave to be buried in the back of a cemetery like Strong Cemetery with plenty of Confederate markers. I mean, you've got one in the center of the shot, and then you've also got the grave of Rebel Combs, who died in the family feuding around here, who was himself a Confederate veteran, killed in an ambush in 1891. And this is the grave of Hannah Fugate, the mother of Martin Sr., who settled here, supposedly, around the 1820s. Now, what's interesting is that neither Hannah nor Martin's father were ever reported to have come down with any kind of increased methoglobin production, which back in the day, they didn't really have a word for. They just called them blue. Now, this is now appreciated as a regular genetic disorder and something that is not to be gawked at. And back to the original graves of the progenitors of the Fugates, you have Martin here, his father, his mother, and some of the Fugates actually fought for the Confederacy. Now, Kentucky at the time was a Union state, but particularly in the southeast or the eastern parts in Appalachia, you had a lot of guerrilla fighting, and there were Confederate units. Now, William Fugate, who was born in 1825, his grave actually notes that he was killed by a sniper in the Civil War. And it's interesting to think of the Fugates that might have actually served in the Civil War, perhaps some on the Union and some on the Confederacy.